Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm really excited about the topic. We're going to talk about a company uh, that nobody's heard of, especially this year, uh, Zoom Communications. I think it's safe to say that uh, Zoom has become an integral part of our lives. It went from the cool video conferencing tool that everybody in tech was using to communicate with internal employees and customers to something that is part has become part of the fabric of our lives to celebrate birthdays, weddings, go to court. Um, I actually attended my nephew's bar mitzvah on Sunday morning via Zoom. And so Zoom has been weaved into our lives and we're really thankful uh, that the team has been able to step up to support the needs of our of our communication. Um, and so with that, I'm joined today by Zach Pierce, who runs data center operations for Zoom. Zach, how are you today? Hey, Ben. Uh, you know what? I'm doing great. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I'm glad that we're able to take the time today to sync up and have a discussion about uh, how Okta has really helped to simplify my authentication processes uh, for my server infrastructure. Uh, to give everybody just a quick agenda of what we're going to focus on today, we're going to start. We're gonna, I'm going to do a very brief introduction to Okta's advanced server access product. Then we're going to kind of dig into Zoom's explosive growth, how they've been rethinking server uh, identity and access management, and in that process, how they really uh, design their automation for scale. And then we'll touch upon the business value impact. And most of this outside of section one is going to be an interactive uh, conversation between Zach and I. So thanks again for joining us today and let's get into it. So as we all know, the pace of modern software is very, very different than it used to be. We're moving quickly. I think if, we, if anything happened over the course of the last year is that we needed to figure out how to communicate with our customers with our business partners, with anybody who we needed to, to do business with faster, right? And so therefore the velocity that we build applications, we deploy applications, we secure applications has increased dramatically. With that, security demands change. And some of the analysts have come out and said very clearly that through 2025, 99% of cloud security failures will be the customer's fault. And what does that mean? That just means that there's lots of different things that you need to control from an access management perspective in order to really provide the security outcomes that your business needs and your business demands. So the real challenge that we have is how can we move fast without breaking things and more importantly, how can we move fast while continuing to secure things? And so if we think about the operating model, the operating model in modern computing has changed. And let's take a step back to really understand why that is. When we were deploying new data centers, everything was very well understood. We would spec out the network, we would spec out the equipment that we needed for the network. We would spec out the, the racks of servers that we were going to put in there. We would place the order. These things were, when, when we were buying them, we knew exactly what their shelf life would be because that's how many years we would think about depreciating them. Everything, once it got shipped, would have an asset tag on it. We'd understand it. It moved slow, right? So now, if I fast forward to today, I can go into my browser right now, and I'm not going to do this, but I could bring up the web console of Amazon, Google, or Azure, and I could launch what would be the equivalent of a supercomputer that may have sat in multiple data centers with thousands and thousands of cores and virtual machines almost instantaneously. Um, and this has created a new set of challenges. No longer are things moving slowly. They're moving quickly. We're building automation. Uh, there's the notion of shadow IT. So I may not know as the head of operations that all of these instances have just been deployed. 
Therefore, if I own the security policy for all of those instances, there's a good chance, if I don't even know these things exist, that our security policies and our security controls haven't been dropped onto that infrastructure as well. So we really need to rethink how we operate and we need to bake as much as we can in upfront from an automated delivery and provisioning perspective. With the emergence of this new operating model and the cloud operating model, and, and what's interesting too, the cloud operating model doesn't just apply to infrastructure as a service. A lot of times we are deploying our on-prem resources in a cloud-like manner. And so we need to do things in a similar way. Obviously the resources don't move as quickly, but we're gonna be managing them in a very similar way. So with that, we really need to rethink access management. And so in the past, we used to design access management in a very static way. Right. We would say, OK, this group of machines is accessible by this by this person and the credential to use it is here. And that person maybe checked, had to check out that credential or not. Uh, but it was very easy for them to go ahead and access the things that they needed to access. And everything was very manual. Right. So we a user started. We needed to give them access. We added them into our directory. We gave them access. And maybe there was a GUI only management plane um, that was working to, uh, to govern what you could and couldn't do um, on those resources. If we think about how things work in the cloud, um, we need a system that's capable of automatically discovering and enrolling resources at any scale. We really need to eliminate any standing access and instead try to issue just-in-time access uh, driven by a single-use credential and make sure that all lifecycle management is automated. So there's a system of record that has a directory source of truth. That directory source of truth is able to consistently add and remove users, groups, roles anytime there's a change. And the system also really needs to be uh, an API-first configuration and provisioning infrastructure to give customers and users the ability to really deploy infrastructure as code. So allow them to seamlessly add security into how they automate their infrastructure. And so why is identity the convergence point? Identity is the convergence point because it governs who can do what on what resource. That said, we need to broaden our definition of identity. Identity is not a username and a password. Identity is not a person. Identity is the set of person, device, and action. And each one of those categories has various attributes. And we need to be using those attributes to be able to make decisions. Like this person can only access these resources from a managed device that has a current patch level, and they can only do these things when they get to that machine. Right? If you don't have a really strong identity system, you're never going to be able to get to the point to be able to deliver that fine-grained authorization that you want uh, to those resources, which also, in effect, lowers the risk that you have from a bad actor doing a bad thing because you have much more control. And so with that, really having a single identity provider with policies enforced and attributable directly to users and roles. For a long, long time in the world of access management, we tended to use the concept of shared accounts. We, we had a group of admins, we added them into a single group and that group had an account and that account logged into machines and, and everybody was root on that machine. We believe that all actions should be directly attributable to the user who took that action. And there needs to be a central administration and end user control plan across all of your environments. So no longer should companies have to maintain multiple directories to access different components of their infrastructure. And Zach and I will get into this, but this was one of the big reasons that Zoom looked to Okta because his group was forced to to run an identity system. And, and we'll get more into that uh, in the interactive session.
The other big thing is driving instant policy adherence. So we all have policies that we need to follow, right? We have various policies from a security perspective. They could be because we're subject to PCI, we're subject to GDPR, we're subject to now CCPA, we're subject to HIPAA. Um, we just have basic security policies that we like to follow. And one of the biggest challenges with policy is management of adherence. So you could have the greatest policy in the world. If everybody's consistently circumventing that policy, the policy is useless. And one of, the, one of the great examples of where this really rears its head is when builders, so developers, DevOps engineers, system engineers, are forced to use products that don't fit naturally into how they do their job. So you have a policy that says, we're no longer gonna use that static SSH key. We're going to use this new system, but that person knows exactly how to use that key. They're used to using that key. And if that new system doesn't feel natural to them, they're gonna push back. And so, which is going to make policy adherence really, really challenging. So we really need to focus on how we're managing policy adherence. So what is Advanced Server Access from Okta? Advanced Server Access is an identity first, privileged access management solution for both dynamic cloud infrastructure as well as your modern on-premise resources. It enables us to eliminate all static credentials associated with logging in and uh, accessing Linux and Windows systems as a privileged or root user. Uh, it allows you to automate the end-to-end -end life cycle of server accounts and policies. So if somebody joins the company, leaves the company, changes groups, changes roles, um, or you just want somebody to be able to access systems for a very short period of time, we handle all of that. And we can also manage and enforce fine-grained least privilege access controls. And so that says when this user logs onto this box, we're going to give them access for the next 20 minutes or two hours or three hours because they need to go deploy some new code. And while they're on the box, we're going to let them do these 10 things so we can really eliminate anybody who has, you know, quote unquote, um, true administrative rights to that box, right? So no longer can everybody have root because that's the only thing we could do uh, when we get somebody on a box. I've talked, upon, I've talked about uh, Okta's advanced server access product a little bit. Um, but now let's kind of think about it in the context of action. So um, I touched upon this a little bit in our opening. Um, Zoom experienced a little bit of growth last year. Um, don't know why. Um, I haven't really been paying attention to the news much. But um, going from 10 million daily participants to 300 million daily participants um, is a pretty amazing thing. So Zach, I, I wanna welcome you to the conversation. Thanks, thanks again for joining us. Just talk about what is that like going from 10 million to 300 million when you're the head of data center operations. So, all, so you're talking about 30X increase in load um, and most, correct me if I'm wrong, of your uh, infrastructure to this point was running in your own data centers around the world. Um, and so how did you quickly go from serving 10 million to 300 million in what seemed like overnight? You know, uh, Ben, I don't remember. <laughs> um, I think I've blacked a lot of that out. No, I'm, sure. I'm kidding. Um, so, you know, I, uh, Thank you for the intro. Uh, we did quite a lot of things in order to get us to that 30x growth. Um, we took a uh, we took a platform that was running in our data centers almost exclusively um, to the public cloud, um, and a big part of that was the public cloud really gave us that ability to have that elasticity. So you know. No matter who you are, no matter how well you've planned, you can't plan for 30x growth. Uh, unless, of course, you're the public cloud, which has somehow always have uh, growth. 
<laughs> um, now, none of this was none of this was simple, um, but our architecture actually gave us the ability uh, to scale really, really well. We have a uh, we have a fairly complicated but not difficult backend system that allowed us to make this, and we did. We uh, I I remember a time when Zoom was that small little not little company. Uh, but one Zoom was the the underdog, I suppose, and now Zoom has become that household name, uh, Kleenex or whatever it happens to be. And it yeah, it's been a, uh, you've gone from a noun to a verb. Yeah, and it's been an interesting kind of trajectory, uh, and to be a part of that has been incredible. Um, and Okta has really helped us to to maintain. Um, and to continue to grow and keep our security posture uh, where we feel, where we felt comfortable and where we really wanted to be uh, on that particular growth path. So was there ever a point in time over the course of the last, you know, call it, let's say, let's go back to, you know, and I know you probably have forgotten as you probably should, but let's think about, you know, April and May of 2020. Was there ever a point in time where your team was like, hey guys, um, stop selling, like shut it down. There's no way we're gonna be able to, be able to consistently serve this, the quality of service that all of our customers are used to, to all of these new kids going to school, right? That are, that are, that are free and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there were a couple of times, Ben, where we had pulled many, many all-nighters in order to stand the capacity up to be able to support tomorrow. Um, there were more times uh, than I could count of, we have to get all of this up tonight or tomorrow is going to be a challenge. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I cannot believe that we are supporting this massive amount of traffic every day on a just a huge growth pattern. And I do remember thinking, you know, it wouldn't be the worst thing if people just maybe went outside and did something. <laughs> um, we don't all need to sit on Zoom all day long. Um, right. But but those times, you know, those those really tough times, those those really solidified my team. Um, and they actually really solidified a lot of uh, crucial relationships uh, professionally and personally um, on the platform uh, as well as outside of the platform. So uh, it was a lot of struggle, but it definitely has uh, paid out uh, for me and Spade. So let, let's go, let's talk about why you had to change how you managed identity and access to servers. So there was a point in time, right? So you're going through this process, Zoom goes from a noun to a verb, right? Now, all of a sudden, all the bad guys are focused on, ooh, look at this new target, right? I've got, and I've got, so I've got a very soft external shell Right. Because I've got like kindergartners and grandparents, right, that are connecting into this platform that they never did in the past. Right. And so these are not very security aware uh, consumers. Um, and so you become a target. Right. You become a target for bad actors. Um, I think Eric, your Eric Yuan, your CEO, it took a lot of courage right, for him to basically come out and say, look, we're going to stop all feature development. We're going to focus 100% of our energy as a company on security. And so how did rethinking server access fit into that priority? Absolutely. And so part of the biggest reason that server access fit in here is our footprint grew exponentially. So there was a lot of, we had a lot of controls around uh, our our authentication uh, infrastructure for the back end, but when we grew at such a quick pace, 
we outgrew the tools that we were using previously. And so uh, we had moved to a kind of more traditional local account configuration. And as we looked at that and said, this doesn't fit with our ability to scale. This doesn't fit with our ability to add more uh, people into my teams. Um, we decided that our traditional methods were not the correct path anymore. Um, so we looked to find an alternate solution. Um, we also really were kind of done being in the identity business. Um, we really wanted our IT department who was already doing onboarding and offboarding to handle our server onboarding and offboarding. Um, the workflow from our HRIS, um, the ability to set our groups, the ability to provide that access, uh, it really made things a lot simpler. Um, and then the, our security team wanted to have a more visibility into the login, the logout, who was, lo who was doing what within the environment. And Okta provided us the ability to actually tick all of those boxes um, without really having to make massive amounts of changes to our infrastructure. And what was it about, so when you say not having to make massive amounts of changes, what, what were some of the key enablers for that? My guess is everybody who needed to access these servers, they, they already had an Okta account, right? So they had an identity that lived in Okta. So that was one big step. Uh, what, what were some of the other things that made it pretty easy to, to not have to make a lot of changes. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the, the big part for us was having Okta accounts. So everyone on my team, you, you, Okta was the, or is the identity provider for Zoom. So naturally we're going to be able to come in and meet with, and, and meet that requirement. Um, but the other part really was, I just want my team to be able to install a client. So this is the SFT client, which is a lightweight client, configure it on their laptop and they are able to SSH to the servers with almost no changes. So whereas previously they would have had their public private key pair that was issued by an administrator. Now they are just using their credentials with Okta that are provided to them on onboarding and they're able to SSH, a browser pops up, they accept it, and then they're into the servers and their session lasts all day without being prompted again. And so the workflow change was one browser window and that's it, and one time in the morning. So very, very limited changes for the administrators in order to be able to do their work. Great. And so, you know, we all know that one of the, key challenges in change, especially when, you know, you have builders involved is most engineers, especially like SREs that are keeping everything up and running, they don't want anything to change because typically when you install new things on servers and things change, that's when pages start going off in the middle of the night, right? So were there some like cultural changes just inherent in oh, this thing's new, I have to use this now. And, and how, how did we get through those? Yeah, I mean, there's always a little bit of that. So everybody always pushes back and no matter how small the change is, everybody, everybody is unhappy with change. Um, I think culturally at Zoom, uh, we really understood that what's most important to us uh, as a company is our security. Uh, and is our simplicity. So those two things are very important to us. And Okta was a very easy task or a very easy tool to integrate with both of those two items uh, at the forefront. So again, for my DevOps engineers, even for my system administrators, yes, this is a new tool, man, you have to type SFT in front of SSH, or you can add it to your SSH config, and then you can just SSH directly there. And the only workflow change is a, is a browser pop-up. So I think it took about 
two days um, in order for the team to really get on board and understand the reason. And because we didn't have to make uh, massive changes to the pipeline, it wasn't now we're using Kerberos and I have to SSH with a host name and I have to do a lot of the things that, that Kerberos makes difficult. Okta simplified for us to be able to just connect to a server with our credentials that we already have. Got it. And so um, you've been able to eliminate all your SSH keys. Oh, it's been glorious. The number of the number of things I have to worry about for SSH keys is is zero, and I now no longer have to. So a new person comes on, I now no longer have to run an Ansible job to put it on a number of servers or go into our old uh, LDAP and add the key. And now you can SSH here. And now I need to worry about, okay, well, you have to rotate your key in 60 days or 90 days. And I have to go badger and, and worry about it. Just all of that is gone. And Okta deals with all of it with very little change. It makes my life much easier. Oh, that's awesome. And then, and then what about compliance, right? I'm sure that, you know, there's constantly, you know, your security team and your compliance team, um, because of the stature, right, that you have in the market, um, there's constant new requirements getting thrown at your teams. H how is Okta and Okta ASA kind of help map some of those compliance challenges? So a big part of that actually is, uh, kind of backing up to what you had talked about earlier is your API first uh, tooling. So having Okta in the pipeline early inside of the HRIS allows me to onboard new people uh, as well as offboard people uh, without me having to, to maintain and manage that. Um, but it also gives our security team the Vi the visibility into the Okta platform, the ASA platform for logins to servers. So it is inevitable that some engineer will say, you know what, I'm just going to give Ben an account on this server. I'm just going to put a key on it. It's fine. We'll just do it for a minute. Um, but as soon as that happens, Okta logs, not the, not the creation of the user, but Okta logs, the login of that user, that goes to our SOC and our SOC actually alerts on that and closes that down. So the visibility that we've gotten with ASA for logins to servers has really helped us to have a, a much broader view into logins into our systems. And so, you know, We've, we've touched upon scale, right? You've gone from you know, 10 million to 300 million. I'm just gonna say that a couple more times, 10 million to 300 million, because most people probably, I mean, you can't necessarily get your head around that. Um, it's a level of growth in a single year that we may never see for a single company in our lifetime. I mean, I, I really do believe that when it's all said and done, there should be a story written about Zoom and its role in 2020 um, and, and well into the future because it's not like you're not done. You're just getting started. Uh, it's just more people know about what you do now. Um, but what you guys had to do in order to drive that level of scale. So automation has to be front and center for how you do, do the things that you do. So let's talk about how you guys deployed Okta ASA at scale. And so maybe you could just walk through how you guys leverage Ansible and how, and how we play a role in you guys building and deploying software. So this is actually a two part. Um, so the first is the configuration of the agent, um, the, the, the ASA server agent, uh, as well as the teams uh, that we set up on the system. So we have a build pipeline that actually spits out images that have the correct ASA configuration with the correct token. Um, we also utilize Ansible uh, from the system side if we need to deploy items that are outside of kind of that default agent. 
Um, and we utilize Ansible, it's, it's super simple. We push an RPM, update a config file, and start a service. Uh, it is very, very simple to do that. Um, where I think uh, our environment is um, unique is we use Ansible in order to deploy hundreds of thousands of instances. Um, and this is to keep software up to date on all of those systems. And we rely solely on the ASA tool to log into all of those servers. So when, when you think about the scale of Zoom from three, from 30 million, or I'm sorry, 10 million to 300 million, and then the way we were doing logins on such a small function with Ansible to now hundreds of thousands, um, and the fact that we're able to do that with ASA, uh, that is a, I mean, that's a great win. Um, but we're also able to integrate ASA into different build pipelines. So not only manual runs, but we're able to do it automatic runs with Jenkins. Uh, we're able to do it with automatic serv uh, service accounts to deploy configurations, um, scheduling our jobs and deploying them. Again, all of that happening with credentials that are generated from ASA, uh, they are short-lived credentials uh, and they are all uh, logged credentials and they're rotatable if if we need to. Um, so everything that we are doing now with all of our deployments all happen through ASA and it is a massive scale uh, in order to do that. And Okta does that seamlessly for us. Oh, that's pretty awesome. And so um, let's let's talk a little bit about value for the business. Um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of categories here, you know, faster time to value. Let's, let's hit on that one a little bit. Um, how long did the overall deployment take? You know, the, so let me, let me just give you a little bit of uh, background. So our old environment, which was a we'll just call it a, an LDAP style environment. I think we spent about a month or two just kind of figuring out how can I deploy this? How can I not break anything? How can I make sure that I get all of my users in here? Uh, and we're talking about a scale that is much, much smaller. Um, because authentication is such a critical piece to the environment, you, you really can't uh, cause a breaking change. When we deployed ASA, we deployed ASA to an environment that was massively larger than where we deployed our LDAP environment. Um, and we were up on that environment in less than a day um, in order for a full deployment, uh, the RPM installed on all the environments, users created the ability to log in. Um, I mean, that, that that's such, a quick deployment without causing any interruption to our environment, as well as allowing people to log in side by side with the old system and the new system. Yeah, I think that's one of the really cool things that we enable for our customers is it's not uh, an all or nothing scenario, right? We can live side by side with how you're doing things today. And it's actually a really good way be because once our agents dropped on the box, we're generating audit events for when people log in with other mechanisms. So it's a good way to start to sunset those older credentials. And obviously in your case, right, you kind of let them bake in over time, right? Uh, because you don't want to just pull the rug out from underneath everybody until you know this new thing works. No, it was kind of cool. I remember um, the initial deployment. I think it happened on a Saturday, right? And there were several of us that were, you know, kind of in in a war room, if you will, virtual war room, right? In a, in a chat room somewhere, just kind of looking at the counts. And it was like, okay, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. And it, it obviously got up there. And then you guys have, you know, had to do subsequent large deployments since, right? Um, because obviously we have had schools relying upon Zoom um, as a way to educate our children, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so that's time to value. That's understandable. Let's talk about risk. How do you feel now versus the past in terms of 
managing risk and, um, you know, avoiding credential sprawl and all those things. So it's saved me actually quite a bit of heartache. Uh, so uh, one of the things I, I always said is my team was the judge, the jury and the executioner on all credentials. And so now when the business or not the business, but now when the security teams or the compliance teams come to me and say, we need to know what servers people have access to and how they can access them. And I'm e I am easily able to now say, all of our servers are configured through Okta ASA. Here's the list. And here is how we do our groups. Here's how we do all of this. And that's done. And the IT team actually is able to provide that level of detail uh, with their standard uh, with their standard user reports that they have. So it's simplified my life from a compliance standpoint substantially. That's great. And so I guess that kind of flows into our next topic, which is reducing that operational burden. So you went from having to build, manage, and deploy an LDAP server. My guess is that was several physical boxes running in different data centers, correct? That's correct. Right, so you were managing that. And so now with, with Okta ASA, you manage nothing? Yeah, and so uh, with that, if I bring a new site on, when I bring a new site on, part of the deployment process previously was I need to build authentication infrastructure. I need to replicate that authentication infrastructure. I need to build agreements. I need to monitor it. I need to make sure it works. I need to test it. Uh, inevitably, when a link failed or the database was corrupt or something, now no one can log into the server. Um, today, the authentication part is handled strictly by the build process. So I install an RPM, put a key on it. That's the the what do we call it? The token? Yeah, the, yeah, the uh, uh, enrollment token. Enrollment right. token. Yeah. Uh, I put the enrollment token on the system and that's good to go. It, I don't have to worry about, I no longer have to worry about my old authentication infrastructure. It just works. That's great. And so, and, and also automation from an onboarding, offboarding. So now, you know, you guys are no longer, um, the, the judge, the jury, I'll even add another role, the clerk, um, as well as the executioner, right? So now you've completely been able to get out of the identity business and allow IT to maintain that source of truth. And it has been, like I said, like I said earlier, it has been probably the best thing that's happened in my almost five years at Zoom to no longer have to manage user accounts. Uh, that's pretty cool. So I think the last topic that I want to touch upon is um, enabling velocity at scale. And so, you know, I'll, I'll say it again, we, we may never witness the scaling event that Zoom has gone through in the last 12 months. And it really is about 12 months. Um, and, and I remember when we first started talking, you're like, I'm like, how many servers do you have? And you're like, well, I don't really know. <laughs> you know, today we have this, we're probably going to go to this, but I'd like to get it back closer to where it was. Um, and, uh, and obviously we all, we all know how the rest of that story went, um, you know, and so enabling that velocity of scale, if we were unable to allow you to bake things in automation, how much harder would this process have been, or would it have been a non-starter? It, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, again, you know, when we talk about, when we talk about that scale and by the way, Ben, I, I do feel bad about not being able to tell you, but I am really happy you guys were able to meet all of my crazy demands of <laughs> 10, 100, thousands, uh, without any issue. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy as well, <laughs> <laughs> but to your point. Uh, if we weren't able to bake all this into automation, uh, we have some pretty custom stuff that causes some issues. And the the ability for us to bake all of that into our Ansible framework just made things very, very seamless. And if we had to go in and 
go a UI and click and do all these other things, it, it, we wouldn't have done it. It wouldn't have worked because we were at such a crisis mode to make sure everything stayed up, everything worked that, that we wouldn't have done it. And actually, uh, the fact that we were able to put ASA in during that crazy growth mode, uh, speaks volumes to the fact that we were able to automate. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So um, I guess we're, we're almost uh, at the end of our time. What I really want to express at this point is, first and foremost, Zach, I really want to thank you and the team. Um, you've been a great partner. Uh, you know, so most people may not know this, but Zoom has um, a chat-like feature that's a little like Slack. And so my team has been in a channel with Zach's team for the better part of a year. We communicate there on a, on a regular basis. Um, but besides that, you know, there's been a, a ton of learning that's happened bi-directionally, right? And, and that to me is, that, that's the best part about, um, you know, selling software and being in the software business is when you can establish those relationships where we both help each other get better and we solve problems. And part of that was, look, you can imagine, um, there aren't a lot of customers out there that are running at your scale for a single app, right? You may have like a bunch of servers in aggregate, but at the end of the day, Zoom is one thing, right? A bunch of services, but it's a single platform, right? And, um, you know, we had some growing pains on our end, which, you know, we've, we've talked about, we've gotten, you know, we've rolled up our sleeves together. We've made some changes in the product in terms of how we do certain things to enable zoom like scale. And that's the way we refer to it now internally, right? You know, engineering comes to me and they're like, okay, you know, what other zoom like, you know, scale, uh, uh, is, is coming down the pipe. Um, so they can prepare, uh, because, and, you know, it's it's non-trivial when you're running a SaaS platform and you bring on um, very large customers. You need to make sure um, that you can keep the engines running because none of your other customers care about the other customer that just came onto the platform, right? Um, and it just needs to be seamless uh, for everyone. So um, I, I just want to say it's been really, really great partnering with you guys. Um, excited to see where we go in the future. I don't, I don't think that um, Zoom is going to lose its verb status anytime soon, right? Um, I think that it has become a, um, it's just a part of our everyday lives. And that's a good thing. It also speaks to the simplicity, right? I think that's one of the beautiful things. You know, we talked about this briefly. The best security should be simple, right? And that's really one of the guiding principles of Okta. And I think in, in your case, the best communication tool should be simple. The fact that we were able to get our kindergartners and our grandparents to be able to seamlessly log on to this platform um, to live our lives speaks to um, the simplicity. And so I just want to say thank you from everybody for all the work that you and your team have done. Um, it's uh, it's made life tolerable uh, over the last <laughs> over the last year. <laughs> Well, you know, Ben, I really, I really do appreciate that. And, you know, I think uh, all of the blood, sweat and tears that we've put in and the Okta team has put in have, you know, have really paid off. Um, we are more than happy to produce a platform that anyone can use and be successful on. Um, and the collaboration between your team and my team has been uh perfect uh we have we have pushed you guys uh and you guys deliver uh we've you know we ask for features and if they're reasonable they're done so uh thank you to you uh we have absolutely loved the partnership awesome well thanks zach have a great day thanks ben you too